This is my Gary Sherman collection. Now, Gary Sherman is not a director most people will rec a name that most people will recognize, um, other than the most hardcore horror and cult uh, fans. Uh, and that's quite a shame because he has directed um, quite a few great horror films and some other cult films that are that are definitely worth a look. And the oldest film I have is of his is from 1983, and it's a movie called Raw Meat, A.K.A. Deadline. And this is a this movie is about people that are disappearing in the subway system and uh, bloody carcasses and sometimes showing up. And it ends up that uh, there was a group of people a couple of decades beforehand that were trapped while making the subway system in a cave-in and they were not able to be rescued. But the people survived and started breeding with one another and started feeding off each other when they died. And one of these creepos uh, is, uh, manages to escape from their, their kind of underground prison and start. he doesn't know how to react with normally so he starts eating what he knows and starts eating people that are in the subway. And uh, Donald Pleasance steals the show in this movie. He adds a lot of the, the really tongue-in-cheek humor. He is a know-it-all uh, uh, British detective and he really made me openly laugh quite a few times in this movie. So. This is definitely worth a movie worth checking out if you love 70s uh, horror films. Uh, then he directed um, the criminally underrated Dead and Buried. This movie is written by uh, Dan O'Bannon. Most notable, he's most famous for writing Alien, uh, writing and directing Return of the Living Dead, and writing a lot of other screenplays like Total Recall. And this is one of the most underrated horror films of all time. It is just a wonderful, smart horror film uh, about uh, people that are dying in this coastal town, grisly deaths, but yet, like, a week later, they show up again, and they look perfectly normal. And this cop in this town is just, he can't, he's wondering, what the fuck is going on? And there is a wonderful twist at the end. If you're a horror fan, hunt down this DVD. Blue Underground released a wonderful DVD release of this. Um... Dead and Barry, that's uh, one of the most underrated horror films of all time. And then we have a really interesting cult film of his. The gritty, the dirty, the sleazy Vice Squad. This film takes place, of course, is about vice detectives on the Hollywood Strip in L.A. And they're on the trail of this psychotic pimp. Now this... What's great about this film is it doesn't use the stereotypical idea of a pimp. Um, this guy is like a big white redneck, and he's just... And Winx Hauser gives a performance of a lifetime in this movie, one of the best performances in a cult film. It's really suspenseful and just a wonderful film that is so gr gritty and sleazy you want to take a shower afterwards, but a definite must-see for cult film fanatics there. Then I have another action film. This one's kind of a miss for him. Wanted, Dead or Alive. It's like a film version sequel to the popular uh, Steve McQueen television series starring Rutger Hauer as his grandson. Uh, you don't need to see the original TV series to get this movie, of course. And this is a movie I was really looking forward to because you got Rutger Hauer as the good guy. Okay, now Rutger Hauer up to this time was known as a bad guy. How bad does the villain have to be in order for Rutger Hauer to play the good guy? So I'm like, this villain, play, played by a Gene Simmons of Kiss, I'm like, oh my god, this bad guy's going to be completely over the top and sadistic, a thing from hell, in order for Rutger Hauer to be the good guy. But you know what? It really is not that memorable of an action film. Uh, uh, the villain is really wasted. Uh, Gene Simmons, I just, the, the villain is a terrorist that Rucker Hauer has to take out, and it's a really forgettable villain, and uh, it's got some moments in it, uh, Some che it's got some cheesy good action moments, but overall, this is a pretty bland action film. I was really disappointed. I was expecting a little more from the guy that gave us Vice Squads, and especially with this cast, so. But this film definitely has its hardcore fans. My uncle, he's a huge fan of this movie, so this is just my opinion on it. Oh, no. And then we get Gary Sherman's Notoriously Bad Poltergeist 3. Oh, my God. This sequel. 
is one of my least favorite sequels of all time. Anytime I make a list of uh, the worst sequels I've ever seen, Poltergeist 3 makes it. And, you know, I understand Heather O'Rourke, the, the, she played Carol Ann in all three Poltergeist movies. She was really ill with Crohn's disease while making this film. And she died uh, a little before it was completed. And, I, and Gary Sherman said he didn't want to finish the film. The whole crew was devastated over her death. They didn't want to finish the film. And MGM, of course, made them. They, you know, they have money invested in this. They, they're going to finish the film. And the result is horrendous. They, uh, she filmed most of the film. They used uh, stand-ins for the rest. And the result is just really shitty. It's not scary. It's got a horrible score. Uh, Carol Ann, of course, is uh, Greg T. Nelson, and he, he doesn't return, and he, she's living with her aunt and uncle, uh, Nancy Allen and Tom Skerritt. Great cast in this with just a horrible sequel. But to be honest, um, even though Gary Sherman said he didn't want to finish it, even if she lived, Heather Work lived and finished the film, I still don't think it would have been a good film at all. I, I think it would have been a little better, but... This, I, you just, I can't imagine even if she lived, this would have turned out to be a good film. This is just a horrible, shitty sequel. And you know what? Gary Sherman doesn't like to talk about it because of the death of Caroline, and or, and and I understand that. But again, the, it still ended up being one of the worst sequels of all time. So that is my Gary Sherman collection, and the films of his. Check out, of course, is Vice Squad, Dead and Buried, and Raw Meat. And uh, if you check those films out, I guarantee you, you'll remember the name, Gary Sherman.